Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our web seminar on dispersion. Um, my name is John Kowalski. I'm part of the marketing team here at Bitgardner. And uh, today we're going to be talking about innovations in production, dispersing, and milling. Uh, we are recording this. Uh, so immediately following the presentation, you'll receive an email with a link um, to uh, look at it, share it, um, you know, whatever you need to do with that. Um, Immediately following the presentation, we should have about 15, 20 minutes or so uh, for questions. If you do have a question, uh, please enter it in the chat function uh, down in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. We'll get to it in order. Um, if we run out of time, we'll follow up with you uh, separately uh, regarding those questions. Uh, so with that, let me introduce our business line manager for dispersion, uh, Mr. Andy Stumer. Andy, it's all yours, sir. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, John. Uh, uh, welcome, everybody, uh, to today's um, seminar on innovations in production, dispersing, and milling. Uh, we're going to discuss a little bit of theory, and then we're going to dive right into the different types of equipment and also giving you a little bit of an overview of who the uh, is and the relationship with PIC. So here's just a quick slide. Uh, that was actually at the last uh, European coding show. That was the VMA stand. So you can already see right there in the back, uh, we had a whole range of different laboratory scale equipment. And then obviously on that side, you can see some of the larger pieces that we'll be discussing today. Uh, here is a pilot unit, uh, and that's a larger scale production unit uh, of our uh, TML mill. So here again, you can see we cover everything really from small lab scale all the way up to pilot and to manufacturing. Um, and you can see the equipment is very modular. So we offer dispersers as well as uh, milling attachments on the same piece of equipment. So that uh, makes the equipment very versatile. And that's what VMA is known for that modularity. So the company VMA uh, actually was founded in 1972 uh, by Mr. Herman uh, Getzman and his wife up there, Elke. Uh, Herman is still actually involved in the business. He's over 80 years old and he still comes into the office twice a week just to make sure that they still follow his design philosophy. Uh, the company is now run by his two uh, children, Christian and Martin. Uh, they're the uh, operating people, and uh, Mr. Getzman is still involved somewhat on a, on a weekly basis. Uh, BIC has had the exclusive distribution rights for VMA products since 1988. Uh, BIC uh, uses that type of equipment throughout their labs globally, and uh, before the 80s, actually, and they found that it would be a good idea if big instruments, our company, would add that to our portfolio. And so we've been offering uh, laboratory scale dissolvers for quite a while and uh, production scale since about three years here uh, in North America. Uh, the company is still family owned. Uh, they have about 100 employees worldwide and about 12 people actually work in the design department developing uh, new instruments and just designing different types of dissolver speed mills, basket mills uh, for the lab or pilot and production. About 40% of everything that VMA makes is custom. So the company is very versatile to customers' needs. Uh, the picture right here on the bottom shows you actually the very first dispermat that was developed. Uh, believe it or not, we still have customers that are running the original dispermat today. Uh, the only thing they really upgraded were the control boxes, but the motors are still the original motors. That's pretty amazing. After almost 50 years, uh, the machines are still running. That really speaks volumes uh, of the build quality of the uh, equipment. Uh, so here is a slide showing you the facility. In Germany, they're about 30 miles east of Cologne, which is in the middle of Germany. Um, that building in the, in the middle right here, that part was added on uh, right before COVID started. 
And so we added more uh, design capability as well as manufacturing capability for, for the dispermats. So just a quick overview on the dispersion process. So basically, we are trying to deagglomerate these larger clusters of particles. So these pigment particles that are clumped together with these invisible forces called Van der Waals forces. They're called agglomerates. These are the, these larger building blocks uh, that you can see here on that slide. And the, and the whole point of the dispersion process is to really break up these binding forces. They're also called Van der Waals forces to break these up uh, and turn these larger agglomerates into smaller particle sizes, clusters called aggregates. And uh, we achieved this process with the dispersing blade. And then to get down to the primary particle size, we really need to use some type of media milling uh, attachment, either a basket mill or a horizontal media mill to really get us down to the primary uh, particle size. So the whole idea is to break up these particles, then as well as wetting of our solid particles. And then at the end, obviously, uh, the stabilization of these particles in, in the suspension and the mill base. Uh, and for that, we can use some type of additives uh, that Big USA offers. Probably you're pretty familiar uh, with what they have in their portfolio. So I really like this slide a lot because it shows you the steps. Um, so in the beginning, we used the cow's blade for wetting and uh, breaking up these larger clusters, these um, agglomerates and turn them into aggregates. And when we reach the desired particle size, roughly between 10 to 20 microns, uh, if we want to go smaller, we then uh, need to move over to the fine dispersing or milling process where we actually grind these pigments uh, uh, to smaller particle size. Um, and in some instances, we can go sub-micron range or even down to um, very low nano range, like sub-100 nanometers um, is possible as well. And then at the end, again, we need to stabilize these particles uh, and, and keep them in the suspended state by using various types of uh, additives that are available. So this slide just shows you uh, different types of pigments, what they look like on a microscope. The whole idea is to break these up and uh, return them to the primary particle size. <clears throat> so here you can see on this slide uh, the difference between the dissolver and the bead mill. And you always start out by using a dissolver for your pre-mix uh, and your pre-dispersion process. So we, we go down to roughly about 10 microns of particle size using a dissolver with a cow's blade. And at that point, if we want to go smaller, then we really need to use the bead mills that really get us down to the very small particle sizes uh, down to all the way sub 100 nanometers is easily possible with the right setup. So the process is basically a pre-dispersion process where we have to look at uh, the tape speed is very critical to be between 18 to 25 meters per second. Uh, for that, we use the dissolver. And for production, we have the model called Dispermat SC, which we will cover in a moment. And then for fine dispersing or milling or grinding, some people call it, uh, we need a, a tape speed of 10 to 16 meters per second. So it's a little bit slower than a pre-dispersion process. And there we have some vertical bead mills, which is called an APS for smaller volumes. Um, then we have basket mill options, our TML, uh, that work really well with the uh, large dispermat SC with the quick change system uh, or the this tourist mill SK, which is a standalone basket mill also for production. Uh, we'll cover that as well. And then we obviously we have horizontal bead mills, uh, dispermat RS line, uh, different sizes all the way from an RS5 to an RS30. It's just that they have 
different milling chamber volumes, and we look at those as well. So we have a whole range of different uh, milling solutions uh, uh, for the fine grinding part of the dispersion process. So here just some different applications, or so we call them end-use markets, where these dispermats are used for. So you can see it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, coatings, uh, inks, dyes, all the way to adhesives. We do some battery slurry development. That's pretty new for us. We also dabble in the food market, agrochemicals, 3D print media. Uh, cosmetics is also very big for us. Um, and all sorts of different coatings uh, that are on the market. Uh, marine, architectural, automotive. So there's a wide range of different applications where, we, where our equipment is used uh, to manufacture these products. So here's a great slide showing you just the manufacturing site uh, in Europe uh, where this customer has different types of production scale dispermats. So we have larger tanks than what you see here. And as you can see on the picture, the dispermat SC here with the cowl's blade but the same machine can also be fitted out with a basket mill. So that makes that uh, modularity uh, really handy because you just buy one piece of equipment and you can do your pre-dispersion. And then when you're ready to do milling, then you just swap out the cowl's blade for a basket mill. And then you can do your fine grinding all on the same machine. So that is the Dispermat SC. So the output is 15 to 55 kilowatts of power, depending on the motor size, based on the volume, uh, we can go all the way from 35 liters up to 2000 liters. Uh, we have done uh, 2,500 liters for some custom applications. Uh, so that's also a possibility. There's different control boards that are available. Uh, and we'll show you that in a minute here. Uh, and, and the SC can be fitted with that QCS system. That's a patented system that's called the quick change system. It's basically a bayonet style flange that's up here. And that basically allows you to seamlessly go from a dissolver and change over to a basket mill. That makes that whole system very unique, uh, saves the customer a lot of time and obviously money because you buy one piece of equipment for your pre-dispersion as well as your milling process. And then you just basically uh, swap out the dissolver blade for to a basket mill or a rotor stator, depending on uh, what the application is. And if you have multiple color families, you can just buy multiple baskets. Uh, that way you really cut down on your cleaning time and idle time of the equipment because you literally just change colors by removing a basket, putting another basket on there, and while the machine is running, you can clean uh, the other baskets. So you don't have any idle time on the equipment. Uh, and also, instead of buying two pieces of large equipment, you can do everything on one piece of equipment. So there are a lot of cost savings associated uh, with this type of combination uh, dissolver basket mill that you wouldn't be getting uh, from any other type of system uh, that size. Uh, we do have the ability to basically add uh, other attachments, for example, you can add a wall scraping system uh, for really viscous materials that helps keeping the uh, container walls clean of product. And it always pushes the material back into the middle of the container to ensure for a proper dispersion or milling process of all the material. Uh, for some applications, there is vacuum uh, upgrade uh, necessary. So we have a special vacuum lid uh, that we can make for this particular device. Um, some customers like to remove all the air, especially if there is foaming, um, you know, with waterborne products, that can be an issue. Uh, and that really uh, improves the whole milling and dispersing process quite a bit. Um, and also from a pro product transfer point of view, uh, by having no air or removing the air, I'm easily able to transfer product from one container to another one uh, because of the uh, air that I have uh, taken off uh, well, outside of my slurry. Um, and then the cover of this machine uh, moves independently from the shaft. 
So that allows you also to raise the cover all the way up uh, for easier access for cleaning. Uh, so that is a, a nice feature that the, the Dispromat SC offers as well. Uh, and then for some applications, when you're dealing with solvent-based products, you want explosion-proof options. So we have different grades of explosion-proof um, models that we can offer there as well, depending on the environment uh, that the machines go into. So here is uh, another slide, just detailing the quick change system. So you can see here on the machine, we have the dissolver blade. And at, at the point when I'm completed with my pre-dispersion, I don't have to remove the container. It can stay under the machine and I'm basically just swapping out the, uh, the blade um, of, with the basket mill. So it's a really nice system. The um, machine can also, as I mentioned earlier, be outfitted with the rotor status system as another option. Uh, we also have ceramic components for our basket mill. Uh, there is a need for certain applications where color stability is very critical. So you know during the milling process, if this is all stainless steel on the inside, during the milling process, the beads will wear down the metal of the uh, basket mill. And these tiny little particles, metal particles, end up in the slurry of your coating. And by using a ceramic lined basket mill or a and the ceramic rotor, we're able to minimize that wear and not have any type of uh, discoloration of our final product. So there is a need for it, especially if you're producing a lot of light or uh, white colors, um, then you really want to look at the zirconium option. We also offer silicon carbide, which is a dark ceramic. Uh, with for improved wear, uh, because one of the biggest um, issues with milling is always the wear on the equipment and the milling disc inside of the uh, basket mill um, is, is probably the biggest wear part. And by purchasing a ceramic uh, milling disc, that really uh, improves the wear tremendously. Um, so these are some of the options uh, uh, that we offer. So here is uh, an example of a, a, a vacuum system. That's just the, uh, the cover on the machine. So it's, it's lowered and, and therefore the whole footprint of the machine is smaller. And by doing vacuum, we have an improved wetting and dispersing effect. Uh, by taking out the air, we have more energy input because you imagine these tiny air bubbles, they act like air mattresses and they're buffering basically the blow of the beads. And by removing the air, I'm able to put in more energy into my uh, mill base. So that means I have faster milling time. Uh, obviously I'm getting rid of all my foam. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have an improved product transfer uh, from one container to another, uh, improved homogenization. Uh, due to the time improvement, obviously cost savings are associated with going with vacuum. Um, we do not sell um, uh, vacuum pumps. Uh, we have some recommendations as to who uh, you could use. The vacuum pressure is really excellent, almost what we have in space. So depending on the vacuum pump, uh, basically you can adjust the vacuum pressure to whatever suits your application the best. Um, and some uh, areas customers require nitrogen um, in, in a dry process so we have the ability to add a nitrogen purging valve allowing you to do this whole thing in a dry process um, as well so that's just an add-on uh, that we can uh, put onto the lid so we have the additional uh, vacuum uh, sorry nitrogen purging option So that's a great example of the uh, vacuum cover on a smaller production scale um, dispromat. So here you can see you have a viewing glass on top. Uh, there is a, a light on the inside that you can control from the uh, control board right here. Uh, I have the ability to add more product right, right uh, here. And then obviously on that side, you can see the, uh, the, the pressure valves to re release the pressure 
uh, from the vacuum or, or nitrogen. So we have different uh, control uh, board options. So on the right side, you see the standard option, uh, which is the SC control. So basically showing you the speed, uh, the amperage and the temperature. So it's a, a really good board for uh, a production environment. If you have a lot of dust floating around and contaminants in the air. Uh, so this is a, a, the most common uh, option. And then we have a newer version called the C technology. So with the C technology, I have more control capability. I can send my data over to a computer for process control to watch the entire dispersion process on a graphical interface. So each of these variables, I have my speed on top. Uh, below, I have my energy input in watts. Uh, I have my torque reading right here, which is an ind indirect measurement of viscosity. Uh, I have a tape speed reading right here, which is really important. Um, I got also a temperature readout as well as a timer function all on the same display. And all these variables can be displayed on a, on, the, on a graphical interface with trend lines. So I can see exactly if I have a spike or a drop in any of these parameters. And I can also program what they call cutoff values. So let's say I have a temperature threshold where I don't want the uh, mill base exceed a certain temperature. I then uh, just program a cutoff value and that basically tells my machine either to shut off or to run with a different speed or different energy input. So there's a lot of different ways how I can uh, set up my uh, uh, production runs. Instead of uh, just running with a certain amount of speed, I can also set up the machine to run with a certain amount of energy. So basically, if I set up in this example here, I'm running with 2,380 watts of energy, then my machine will automatically adjust the speed to always maintain the same amount of energy that I'm putting in. So if my viscosity changes of my material, then my speed will change uh, depending on the viscosity because I'm still maintaining uh, the same amount of energy input. So that's really nice. I can do the same thing on my uh, laboratory scale models. Uh, and that allows me then to really precisely upscale because I know exactly how much energy I'm using to disperse certain volume of product in a certain amount of time. Uh, and that helps me calculate the manufacturing costs of every batch of product that I'm making. Um, and I can set up the experiment in the lab that way, as well as my production environment or, or, or my production blueprint as well. Um, all the data can be stored in a database with the C technology. I can give uh, my uh, the individual products a product name and store it by product name or product number. And then at a later point when I want to uh, run the same material again, I just recall it. And it allows me then just to replicate the process exactly the same way every single time uh, for repeatability and reproducibility of my uh, production trials or runs. Um, there is another control panel uh, option that we have with Siemens. So basically customers uh, sometimes want to integrate a scale, for example, or they have their own QC process. So they are able to program the machine uh, themselves by using this particular uh, control board and do everything customary. Um, unfortunately, right now, the lead times are really long. Uh, for this program, programmable control board. And uh, it's almost one year right now, what I found out last week, uh, the lead time, um, yeah, about a year uh, for that kind of uh, integration. I think Andy's getting a glass of water or something, but um, until he comes back, always remember that uh, if you have any questions or comments, please log them in the chat function. I, I'm sorry. Right hand corner of your screen. Oh, you're back. There you are. I, I don't know what happened. The uh, microphone just turned off. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm it sad. wasn't how me. Much, <laughs> I'm not, um, how much did uh, you lose? No, no. You, you just flipped to this so slide, so I think if you start here, you're good to go. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that mishap. So here you can just see a pilot scale facility um, in Germany that we, we, we have some capabilities to do larger trials for our customers, uh, for, for milling equipment, uh, as well as dispersing needs. We also have a horizontal bead mill as well on, in our pilot plant that we can uh, use to do some trials. Um, we have also a really unique solution, uh, which is called the Dispermat TM. It's a two-in-one desalver basket mill combo. The SC that I showed you before basically had the ability to swap out the baskets and then uh, replace the milling baskets as you need them for different color families. On the TM, the milling basket is integrated with the dissolver, so you don't have to swap it out at all. Uh, this is great if you're running uh, one color on the machine and you're not really changing the color and dedicating the basket to one color. So basically, you do your pre-grind, your pre-dispersing with the cowls blade. And when you're ready to do milling, all you have to do is push a button on the control panel and then the basket mill will come down, will get lowered into the uh, mill base container and then you're ready to do your milling. Uh, basically, there is no need to move a container around to uh, swap out baskets, so everything is integrated. It's a true two-in-one dissolver basket mill combination. Um, obviously, there's a lot of advantages to that. Also, footprint is reduced. Again, I only need one machine for all my dispersing and milling needs. Um, with this particular setup, I can go up to 1,600 liters of product. I uh, have also, again, the different control options, as I showed you earlier. We also offer uh, an explosion-proof model, as well as um, ceramic options for really color-sensitive uh, application where uh, you want uh, uh, the, the ceramic uh, to protect the color from discoloring. Uh, and then again, we have also a vacuum option as well for the TM. So here you can see how uh, the basket will come up and down. Um, so it's an excellent solution uh, for customers that run uh, one color and want to dedicate uh, a machine just to that one color family. We also offer different container sizes. Uh, they are double walled uh, for cooling. And then we're also able to cool our basket directly. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, for proper temperature uh, control and maintenance. So here uh, is a slide of a customer where we installed two large TM1000s, production scale machines, uh, dispersion manufacturer in the Midwest. And obviously you can see here, the basket right up here uh, behind this gentleman, we have the uh, dispersion blade that's not installed yet that will go up right on here. And then basically uh, the combination system basket as well as dispersing blade all in one. They run these machines. I checked with them a week ago, 24-7. Uh, they're super happy with the performance and the wear on the equipment. Uh, so they are real workhorses for their manufacturing operation. Uh, we also offer this from at SK for production, uh, also different sizes. The SK is a dedicated basket mill, so it comes as a basket mill, but again, you have the option of fitting it with the uh, QCS package so that you could swap it out to change it over to a dissolver if you wanted to. So they're also uh, backwards compatible. Um, we again offer uh, explosion proof models, different control options, ceramic option. You can also get a nano kit. Nano kit for the basket mill allows you to really grind down the particles to super small particle size. Um, with, the, um, with the basket mill and the nano kit, you're able to go down roughly to 400 nanometers of particle size. 
And again, because I can uh, remove the baskets very easily, I can do very quick color changes with the SK or with the SC uh, that I showed you earlier. Uh, here is the uh, QSC stand. So really nice, uh, that's just one option. Other customers remove the basket differently, but this is an option where you have a stand and you just put the stand underneath the machine, lower the um, shaft, and then basically once it sits on the stand, you just uh, turn, open up the quick change system, that flange, and then just remove the dissolver or the basket mill, and then just replace it with another basket mill or a different dissolver disc. So I would say that a change from one basket to another basket or to a dissolver blade uh, can be done in under three minutes. So you can be sure that you're always using the equipment for what it's designed to do, uh, making product for you and not sitting there idle, wasting hours cleaning it. So there is a lot of upside to um, having that quick change system um, integrated with our uh, disc Um Just a couple of pictures here. Uh, with the SK mill. So you can see on the mill on the bottom, uh, there is a cow's blade that actually allows us to pump the product out of the milling basket and push it back around to the top uh, in the container where it then gets sucked back into the mill. So we have a very good flow and rotation of the mill base in and throughout the basket mill to ensure for proper and efficient milling. That's a great slide showing you that. So basically that's the design of the basket mill. Here is the basket. Uh, inside the basket on top, we have a pumping wheel. Uh, below the pumping wheel, we have our milling disc. And then on the bottom, we have a screen. And right outside of the screen, we have that cow's blade. So that cow's blade actually draws the mill base through the screen, pushes it back around to the top. And then that pumping wheel inside of the mill on top will then suck the mill base back into the mill. So I have very efficient circulation of my mill base through uh, in and throughout the mill. And the, and the small dots right there are your media uh, that are used to grind down uh, the pigment. So here uh, is an example of a large basket mill. So right here, this is where you're adding uh, the media. And uh, you have a rod here for cooling so that it would be coolant or water in. Uh, these basket mills are all double walled for, optim for optimum cooling. So we're actually not only cooling the side of the basket mill, we're also cooling the top. This is where most of your energy gets created is inside of the basket. So we really want to properly cool that part. And then we have coolant or water return. And on the back side here, we have another rod that's actually how we measure the temperature inside of the basket mill. So we literally get the accurate reading of our current temperature of the slurry inside of the basket mill. Uh, that's where most of our energy is dispersed and that's how uh, where we should uh, be able to monitor uh, the temperature for an accurate reading. Uh, here's an example of our manufacturing scale horizontal mill, the RS. So again, uh, we have different volume options there. Uh, motor power depends on the volume. Uh, also, again, uh, seat control panel right here on the display. We also have different control uh, modules uh, depending on the environment. Uh, we also offer explosion proof models. Uh, ceramic option, either zirconium or silicon carbide. Uh, a nano kit is available for super small particle size uh, requirements where we will need to go down to sub 100 nanometers. And again, we have a vacuum option also for our horizontal mill. And then here you can see volumes per hour on this table below and the milling chamber size um, depending on the requirement. Um, we can also make them larger. Uh, some customers have uh, much larger applications, so we can accommodate those, uh, again, with the custom uh, build of one of the horizontal mills. 
Uh, we also have a vertical bead mill uh, design. Uh, this is more for lab scale and pilot scale, so small scale manufacturing. So it's not for very large volumes. Uh, we can go up to 30 liters with the custom design. Uh, this is used mainly for really expensive uh, pastes uh, or co coatings where you use gold or platinum, uh, where um, the material is super expensive and the volumes are not too large. So basically it's a type of a pot mill. So you have a container and inside of the, the top container, you have basically a, a screen on the bottom with a drain plug right here. And once you complete your milling cycle, you just open the drain plug on the bottom. And then because this is a milling uh, process, we have a cover, a lid that's uh, tight. And then you hook up an air hose and basically you would purge the mill base with air pressure through the container into the container below once I remove the drain plug. So that's a really efficient way of milling, especially for lab scale uh, and small production uh, because it's also very easy to clean. Uh, once I purged all my material, all I have to do is put the drain plug back in place, fill up my container with solvent or um, a cleaning solution with the right polarity, and then I just run uh, the mill uh, for a couple minutes and then I drain it out the same way. So that allows me to really efficiently clean uh, my milling system at a very high rate of speed and then move over to a new color. Uh, if you are familiar with the horizontal mills, it takes a long time uh, to clean these pieces of equipment. And with this setup, I can do a color change in probably five, 10 minutes. So we have a really excellent applications lab in Germany where we can do other trials. We have vacuum systems, we have rotor stated, all different types of milling systems. Um, so we can send material there, or we also have a nice lab up in Wallingford uh, in conjunction with our sister company, Big Additives. We're able to do trials. Um, I also have a horizontal mill back here. It's not on the picture, and I have also additional uh, uh, vertical bead mills available as well. Here you can see all the different attachments. So we'll be, be able to really do uh, trials for our customers, bring you in and show you proof of concept and um, basically uh, show you how all these different attachments work uh, with our system. An example of the two new pieces of equipment that we have in the lab in Wallingford, so that's the new AE6 with the new C control, and we also have a new SL12 uh, horizontal bead mill uh, that is also in our lab in Wallingford for doing trials on a horizontal mill. So the Wallingford site is really a first-class lab uh, where we have all the capabilities to really show you the performance of our equipment with the different milling tools. Uh, we also have uh, the ability to do upscale uh, to large equipment. Our equipment really upscales at a ratio from one to one. Um, so that's really good, uh, especially for somebody who is looking to really replicate what they're doing in the laboratory. Uh, we are also able to utilize the resources that they have up there. So we have a chemist that will work with us while we're doing the trial. Uh, and give us advice on formulation changes or other options uh, during the trial uh, that are really helpful uh, coming from the uh, chemi chemistry side. Um, it also can be a showroom uh, for our customers uh, to bring them in and show them just the equipment without doing a trial, or we could also utilize it as a seminar location. So if you have a larger group, uh, we can discuss having your entire team up there for a day or two to do a whole seminar and then training on the equipment uh, as well as hands-on on, on uh, the actual dispersers and milling gear. So that covers it today. I hope uh, you enjoyed the presentation. Let me know if you have any questions. Excellent.
Thanks, Andy. Good stuff, as always. Um, we do have one question here. Um, if others have questions, please just log them in the chat area and we'll get to them. We have a few, few minutes left here. But first question from Samuel, what's the difference between the horizontal mill versus the basket mill? Uh, so the, the horizontal mill basically has a rotor on the inside and the basket mill is using a milling disc. Um, a basket mill is a system where I have a, a, a set fixed volume. Uh, so it's contained in a, all my mill base is contained in a container. And in a horizontal mill, I have the option of either do a pass through or circulation mode. So there is different ways of setting that up. Um, you also have uh, the ability with the horizontal mill to really go down to sub uh, low my, uh, nano range, uh, sub 100 nanometers, for example. That's something that you can't really do with a basket mill. Um, you probably get to about 400 nanometers, and that's the limit of how low you can go with the basket mill. The advantage is uh, with the basket mill is you have much quicker cleaning time, uh, and you don't have as many wear parts as you would on a horizontal mill. Uh, you know, on a horizontal mill, there's a lot of uh, seals and, and, and um, other components that wear inside of the mill that you need to replace frequently. Whereas on a basket mill, the only thing you really need to replace over time is your milling disc. So there's a lot of advantages to that. And especially the cleaning time, it's probably gonna take you anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours depending on the model or maybe even more. Um, some competitive uh, horizontal mills require three or four hours of cleaning to do a color change, whereas a basket mill, I can clean that thoroughly in about 45 minutes. Nice. Did that answer your question, Samuel? Yes. Okay, good. Good deal. Okay, next question here from Hiram. Uh, what's the biggest advantage of the basket versus traditional rotor stator setups? Good well, uh, the, the rotor stator is actually more of, you know, when I'm trying to mix two things together, uh, it's uh, it's like a homogenization process. Uh, if, if, for example, a salad dressing, right, where at a very high rate of speed, I need to blend two things together. I would use a rotor stator. Uh, if some people like to use it for particle size reduction, but it, it, I always question the efficiency and you also limit it in terms of uh, viscosity because the rotor stator really re requires a very low viscous uh, mill base to really go through the rotor and the stator at high rate of speed uh, to get through these little uh, openings. Uh, if you have a viscous mill base, it's very difficult for the rotor stator to do a good job. Um, so milling is always going to give you more efficiency uh, and quicker particle size reduction for most applications. Of course, you know, we have that set up in our lab in Wallingford, and we would welcome you to come in uh, and to do a trial and a comparison. We can see with your product uh, which would work better. But if it's a coatings application, uh, I would tend to think that it's probably more likely that with the basket mill, we'll get much better results. Nice. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, what other questions do people have here? Uh, just log them in. Um, are the frequent questions that you get, Andy? No, I just I one more thing. It's actually uh, emulsifying. So it, yeah. for emulsifying, I, I would be using a, a rotor stator. You know, take a salad dressing, right? I'm emulsifying two components at a high rate of speed. I'm blending them together, oil and water. Um, milling is a totally different process. So I'm not emulsifying. I'm really doing particle size reduction. It's not that I can't do it with the rotor stator, but the intent, the design of the rotor stator is really more for emulsifying rather than uh, true milling. Nice. I love the, the fact that all this equipment is... Uh, flexible it can it can right. grow grow with you from you know pilot all the way up to production yeah the modularity so a lot of customers always ask uh how easy it is to change over from one uh milling attachment to a a, a, a cowl blade or a rotor stator 
Um, it's really easy. So we have for the lab scale, we have this on the production scale, we call it the QS system. On the lab scale, we call it the DL shaft. And basically the DL shaft is a bayonet style flanging system uh, that allows you to very quickly go from a, uh, a rotor stator setup to a basket mount setup or back to a cowl blade setup, uh, you know, in the lab in less than one minute. So it's a really, really easy way of moving from one application to another, all on the same piece of equipment. So the design is really excellent. We yeah. also have other attachments for the lab. Uh, we have the ability to add a vacuum system, uh, a wall scraping system. Uh, we also now offer what's called a TMS. It's a torque measurement sensor. Uh, right now, we're actually measuring the torque with the frequency converter. So we measure how much energy the motor draws to um, disperse the material. So we calculate a torque value, a percentage of torque. But some customers really want to have a more accurate torque measurement, especially in R&D. Uh, they, they want to develop uh, tables for the viscosities. So we have a specific sensor uh, that has its own motor that's super precise, that can accurately measure the exact torque uh, uh, during the dispersion process. They can then be calculated to the, an exact viscosity uh, value. Nice. Another that comment. Oh, Sorry. Uh, that, that only works though with the C control panel. Not with okay. the uh, just manual control panels. Got it. Got it. Uh, another comment question here. Uh, you talked about the first two steps of the dispersion process. What about the last step, the letdown or stabilization stage? Um, yeah, so, that, so that's uh, up to the customer, really. I mean, you know, the stabilization stage, uh, depending on what additives they're using. Uh, and then obviously you remove the product either by pumping it out or by, uh, you know, the smaller containers, uh, you remove it, you know, with the forklift, uh, so there's different options of taking it out. Uh, how you let down or add more product to the same container, there's many different ways uh, that can be done. We are really looking at how efficiently we can reduce the particle size uh, with our dispersers and milling equipment. Sounds good. Uh, what is the big difference between the yeast drill equipment with a rotor stator and disperman? Yeah, so I'm a little bit familiar with the Istral. It's basically a, a rotor stator system uh, for, I think they make it for production. I haven't actually worked with it myself. Uh, it's used in some coding application. It works really well. Uh, it doesn't use any media, so it's a true rotor stator. But again, I want to caution uh, to do a real trial on it because it doesn't work for all the applications. Uh, if the viscosity is too high, it's difficult to process the material. Uh, it really works or should work well when you have very low viscosities, but I can't tell you much about the application parameters to really dial it in and the processing time. I'm more familiar with the uh, bead milling equipment and our basket mill equipment. But I do know that it's available. Uh, they have inline processing capability. Um, so if if, if, if there is a, a way to do it, um, then um, there, there might be some advantage, advantages to it from a cleanup standpoint. Uh, but I, again, I'm not too familiar with the types of uh, viscosity ranges that they are successfully able to process. So I do know in general, rotor stator um, uh, becomes a lot more challenging to hide the viscosity of the material. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Andy. Uh, what other questions? How can uh, we help? Andy's really Mr. Dispersion. Um, uh, the person that asked the person that asked the question, uh, yeah. Instral, uh, do you have an Instral? Uh, can you tell us more about it? Uh, what is your uh, view on it? Um, Carolina, let me unmute you here if that's all right. There, now you're able to turn on your microphone from your end. Are you there, Carolina? I'm 
Maybe uh, she doesn't. Um, there's, yeah, you might not have a, a microphone. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, you should see a little microphone in a red circle. If you click that red circle, um, we'll be able to hear you if you have a microphone. No. Maybe not. That's, Maybe we'll send her an email. Okay. Or, or so we, we'd be interested in talking to her. Perfect. We'll, we'll follow up with you, Carolina. Thank you, Carolina. Other questions, comments from anyone? Anything um, Andy can help with? Uh, I think we're good. Okay, well, we appreciate you, Andy, your expertise uh, when it comes to dispersion milling and um, especially around the production. And um, we know you're up on all the new technologies here. Um, so thank you very much for your, your time and expertise. Um, and, thank, and thanks for everyone for attending. Um, you'll receive a, a link to this recording uh, immediately following this. And stay tuned for any uh, new uh, web seminars or office hours formats from BitGardener. And if you have any questions um, that come up in the next day, day or two or next week or next month, anytime, feel free to hit reply to any of the marketing messages. Um, we'll get those to uh, Andy. Um, they'll, they'll come to me and uh, one of my colleagues and uh, we'll route them appropriately. So uh, thanks for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.